And Dave Sharma joins me now from Canberra. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Dave. What is your view on this incredibly underwhelming response from these Teals who promise to be a friend to the Jewish voters that they represent? Well, I'm just shocked, Sherry, that they've been missing in action. I mean, as you said in your introduction, Jewish and Kuyong have, uh, Wentworth and Kuyong rather, have some of the largest Jewish populations in Australia. And I know that both members of Parliament for those two seats promised and pledged to the Jewish community that they would be staunch and stalwart friends of uh, Israel and the Jewish community and they would speak out uh, when things were troubling that community. And the fact that they've been conspicuously silent and have had nothing of substance to say that's critical of the government, I think just shows their um, their cynicism. I mean, it's it's very easy to tell any community group at election time, I'm there for you, I'll be there for you, I'll speak up for you. But when the rubber hits the road is when communities feel attacked or under siege or decisions are being taken that are adverse to their interests. That's when you want your elected members to speak up and elected representatives of parliament have a platform. They're able to do that. They're able to add mm. their voice to these debates. So the fact that they've chosen not to do so, I think, you know, tells you where their priorities lie. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't agree more. Now, what about the extraordinary amount of power these hard left radicals from National Conference have? Because this decision was made the week before National Conference. There was a deal struck. I mean, that Penny Wong and Albanese had to change Australia's foreign policy in such a dramatic way just to appease the, the left wing of their party. I mean, who is actually running the country here? Well, I think it's it's the faceless men and women, yet again, the people that Gough Whitlam railed against almost 50 years ago. I mean, these are unelected uh, members of a political party who are dictating the foreign policy of, you know, one of a G20 economy and one of the most significant powers in the Indo-Pacific. I mean, this is no way to run foreign policy. This is no way to run the affairs of state. Having a small, noisy activist minority within a political party dictate and put a veto over what decisions you will or will not take in the national interest. Now, mm. this decision alone is bad enough, but, you know, you can only imagine when they decide to have a stance on free trade, which they're already indicating, on yes. acquiring nuclear-powered submarines, on our defence posture, on the size of our defence force, on any number of issues, is it always going to be the noisy activist left base of the Labor Party that now determines what is the foreign policy of this country? Mm, mm, no, it's a very good point. I mean, the power that they have, we are yet to see how it's going to uh, have implications in, in other areas of policymaking. But on this particular, the detail of what Labor's actually done here, do you think it seems to be denying any Jewish claim to the West Bank and Jerusalem? And where does the Labor Party want Jews to go? Well, look, absolutely. I mean, it's, Labor's effectively determining the outlines of a two-state solution and saying this is where the borders of a future Palestinian state will lie, this is where the borders of Israel will lie. This is regardless of the fact that no agreement has been reached between the parties and regardless of the fact that no other international countries presume to dictate where these borders are going to lie. It's clear that they've denied any claim, any Israeli claim to the Western Wall and the Temple Mount, which are the holiest sites for Judaism. Um, they've made clear now that they consider that to be in occupied Palestinian territory. I mean, mm. that's that's astonishing news to uh, any Jewish person and any citizen of Israel, regardless of their political persuasion, where they believe that Israel has a legitimate claim um, to the Western Wall and the Temple Mount. And they, you know, as you would know, under current arrangements, they share that access. Muslims are free to go and worship uh, at the top of the Temple Mount. Jews are free to pray at the Western Wall. Religions are allowed to coexist there. There's, you know, a multiplicity of faiths in Jerusalem. That happens under Israeli control and under Israeli sovereignty. And I point out when Jordan controlled uh, that part mm. of Jerusalem from 1948 to 1967, Jews weren't allowed to go there. Jews weren't allowed to visit the Western Wall. Jews weren't allowed to go to the holiest site in Judaism. I mean, is this what the Labor Party wants things to return to? Yeah, no, exactly. Dave Sharma, thank you so much for your time. And I just have to say that this at a time when anti-Semitism is rising as a national survey from the Australasian Union of Jewish Students uh, found in the newspapers today. Dave Sharma, thank you very much for your comments.